These days, companies compete based on the software they write. That's how they impress us as customers. Every, every company has to be more efficient, but also more appealing For to customers. For all their, their stuff, back office stuff, customer you know, satisfaction. It used stuff. to be just back office, and now it's front office too. Now it's appealing to everybody and differentiating from their competition. So every, every company's got to write a lot of software. So someone they comes, a faster way. someone comes in and says, I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to write the code. And the, what you can do is 20 times faster. 10 to 20, according to a leading analyst. That's right, 10 to 20 times faster, and here's why. Because instead of writing it by lines, you draw it like a picture. It's a flow chart with boxes and arrows, and you depict your intentions in the software, and then we translate that into code. Is there code already written, and you're just using some of it that's already been written, or it's really computer-generated new code? It's an interpretation layer. And so you could think of it as <laughs> code already existing, but it's not blocks of is code because that wouldn't be smart enough. Yeah, is it AI? It. Though? There's absolutely AI in there. Yes. And but that's that, why you can finally I can say something here and it comes out there translated properly. But the AI is not the translation, it's just an augmentation, right? AI isn't smart enough yet to actually write your code, so I'm not relying and on it. And what language is it writing it in? Well, it's not writing it in the language, and the important thing here is there's never an authoritative layer that you can go down to and modify. We're interpreting your instructions. So you express what you want in software, and then we interpret that on every mobile device, on any cloud, in a scalable I mean, this way. This is Zen meets software development. I Although, mean, it just, I think, no, no, about, I I think about when you talk to what your I don't phone, understand. No, no, no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. So if, if you want to write an app yeah. for, for this phone, yeah. It ultimately has to be done somehow in Swift, right? Like that's that's what what that's what okay. it has to land in. Eventually, you write something in Appy, and it's going to end up in as a native app on that phone. However, it's going to okay. be a native app on every phone, every device. Okay, and but my point is that you're going to write it in Swift for Apple. You're going to do a, a different version over here and a different version over here. Appian is going to translate your intentions that you right. expressed in a flowchart and drag and drop ways into a piece of software that'll run on that that phone. That's drag right. Drag and drop. Um, the old computer aided. Software engineering that sounded good, but it really wasn't custom, right? You had to go in, and someone had to write a bunch of more code to make it work. Over the years, there have been a lot of attempts to create an easy way to write software, and this is the latest generation. I think it's gone a lot further than the other generations. You can tell that because we're being run by the biggest organizations in mission critical ways. Unlike these old attempts that kept it simple, and it wasn't it wasn't powerful enough to do the top job. So. I've been studying this Python book. I guess I'm just, I don't, I don't even need it anymore. Right, so what, you, you, big revenue increases uh, and, and narrowing losses, but, but still not profitable. That is correct. When, uh, so year over year, for the next two or three years, your compound revenue growth rate, is, you, you see it to, to be how much? Over the past year, we've delivered 36% subscription revenue growth. And that's, by the way, the most important component of our revenue. So I'm going to measure us by subs revenue growth. And uh, we're going to continue to grow. We haven't put out a forecast for 2019, but I feel, I feel good about our growth. And do you have a, a goal for profitability? When, when do you see that? We've got a very informal goal that we would be cash flow positive by the end of 2019, but we're willing to change that according to circumstance. And we did at the outset of 2018 invest an additional $10 million based on the growth opportunity. Do you have, have companies like, like Ryder or I, I know you, uh, you've got colleges? Uh, yeah. Department of Agriculture, do they come to you or do you have a sales force that, that, that goes out? We have a sales force, but I'm proud of those clients. And you'll find that, though I can't always talk about them, we've got some of the top firms in almost every industry around the world running multi-million dollar applications on the Appian platform. It shows that it's really industrial strength stuff. So um, who, if they don't come to Appian, who do you think they're working um, who do you think they're working with? A competitor. Like, like well, they could have built the software in-house, right? That's an obvious alternative. It's slower, but it's traditional. They could have gone to a mainline competitor of ours like Pegasystems. Are you a, a, a coder? I've fiddled around a little bit. I'm but you're, a, you're an economist. Yeah. So who'd you get? You, you, to, this was your idea, or some, how, how did this happen? Well, I, it was many people's idea, and it evolved over time. It we happened a while the business ago. 19 26. years ago. Yeah. 19 years ago. And, and so over time, we've adapted, and we've changed the business plan a little bit. And I'd say we've been doing low code for about 7 to 10 years. Um, I almost got into that. What is it? Uh, app, sys, what is that? I mean, you can't even say the, uh, uh, the division. You know what I'm talking about? You, you, no, it's, it's uh, I, I had it here, but it's. High productivity application platform uh, as a service categorization. It's right. uh, H 
PAP PASS abbreviation. It, yeah. It, it, yeah. HPA PASS? Yeah, that, HPA that PASS. Hub, Hub. Partner's definition for what is otherwise called low code. So we can, we can call it low code and it's a I prefer thing. to call it low code. I love simple words. I think yeah. that my, my mission is simplicity with the organization too. Everything about creating code should be simpler in order to allow people to develop more of it, change it faster. I think that's what's really missing in code.